guys. Welcome to Andrea Loves Everybody. This is a podcast about love where every week I interview someone about love and relationships and stuff. <laughs> Today with me, I have Dominic Angel. Is that your real name, by the way? No, it's a stage name. Is it a stage name? Okay, because you are an angel. But oh, also I was like, how? Yeah. what a perfect, adorable name. Is that like your first and middle name? Yeah, it's my first and middle name. Well, it's not really a secret. I'm not, um, this isn't going to like reveal anything big, but... My younger brother, Ryan, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ryan Reyes, mm-hmm. um, he's a comedian also, obviously, you've met him. Um, but when we first started, we started comedy at the same time. So when we started going up together, uh, whenever they called our names, let, the host would always spend like 10 minutes like, oh, are you guys brothers? Oh, which one's the funnier one? Oh, and so you just got annoyed and you're like, I'll just go by Dominic Angel. I'll just go by Dominic Angel. It's such a cool name though. It sounds like Dominic Angel. Like it sounds like a superhero name or like you fight crime. Like this is awesome. So it's pretty dope. I dig it. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, so I like to start this podcast by telling every guest something that I love about them. Um, I don't I haven't hung out with you a ton, but I will say the first time I met you, I was still hosting Mom Party, yeah. which is an open mic that runs, it starts at 1130 at night. It's very late, Mike. Oh, yeah. And you came and I, you sat in the corner the whole time and we have a list, we have lists and then we have lottery spots and we're going through the lottery spots, we're going through and it was, we we're getting down to the end of the bucket. It was almost two in the morning and I was like, oh, this poor kid has been here since the beginning. <laughs> I went to you and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. You know, you, thank you for being such a great sport. Because usually when someone's there that long, they either will leave, they stop having fun, or they're just like, will come up to you and be like a dick. And like, why haven't I gotten like, they're just whatever. And you were having the best time. Like at two in the morning, you were still laughing at everyone's jokes. And like, you stayed in the room the whole time, which is almost unheard of for an open mic. And you were such a good sport about it that I was like, what a sweet kid. <laughs> like, who is this person? So I really appreciate it about you. And oh. also, you have the nicest dog. He so. is very nice. Yeah. Shout out to Hermes. Shout out to Hermes. I am, um, because you're roommates with Armando Torres. Yes. Few, past guest. Took him in off the streets. Took him in off the streets. Gave him a home. Yeah, I gave very him a home. sweet. I gave him a job. You've rescued you know? many. And, you know, I don't like <laughs> to <hang>. strays. <laughs> I don't like to hang it over people's heads, but you know, I saved his life pretty much. Not a big <laughs> deal. Yeah. So today, uh, we're gonna talk about your first relationship yeah. and kind of losing your virginity at a very young age, which to me, I was like, when you're like, I lost my virginity in seventh grade. I was like, what? I didn't even know what anything yeah. was then. Yeah. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that experience like? I mean, like, was that, was that the first girlfriend you ever had? Yeah. Or did you have like a girlfriend <laughs> that you like held hands with or, no, you know, whatever? No. Um, was she older I, than you? She was a year older than I was. So what happened and how, you know, how did this kind of relationship happen and and what went down? Because you're in seventh grade. How old are you then? Twelve? Uh, yeah, we started this relationship when I was 12 years old and it lasted until I was 14, maybe 15. That's so young. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I, I honestly, so I've been like unpacking a lot of this like getting ready for this interview um because i pitched it to you and i was like yeah this would be a cool thing to talk about and then i was like going over to my head like the way things went down and it's just it was kind of bonkers like um yeah it was my first girlfriend my first like anything um there i've never uh i had never been with anyone and so a little bit of backstory before that like my parents had my older brother when they were when my mom was about 16 okay yeah they were young teen parents you know they had my mom had me when she was 18 um so i guess in my head like being young and in a relationship was kind of normal and also like my older brother had gone through middle school before and when you're a kid you know people that are older than you seem much much more older than you yeah And so, you know, he had like date, girlfriend kind of a thing, but I don't think it was ever as serious as like what I went through. Interesting. Yeah. Or, you know, my perception of it was like, okay, this is the age where like you start 
having relationships with people. How so? How did that happen? Did you? I mean, like, did you just ask her out and like? No. So actually, uh, this was a person that like. So this was my first relationship, but I had like a crush on this. We went to the same elementary school and she was always a year older than I was. So I never got to talk to her um, ever. But um, she, I had a crush on her for like, since I was like in like third grade. So essentially my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> Up until no, I, that point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I had had a crush on this person because she was really cool. She was like into rock and roll, like punk stuff. So like, she, I like that. Yeah. I was like, I like these things. I Around like fifth and sixth grade, I started listening to like punk music and um, yeah, like, like weird stuff, you know, and uh and so she liked those things, and she was the only other person that I had seen that like liked these kinds of things. Um, but you know, she was older than I was, and it was kind of like a thing where uh, I just like crushed on her from afar. Like I was like, "This is never going to be a person that I know." Um, so then, in s when I started middle school, um, she was in eighth grade, and two of my best friends at the time were also in eighth grade because so the way that it worked was I was in sixth grade two of my friends were in seventh grade and then my older brother uh was in was in uh eighth grade so like you guys would all hang out together. we would all hang out together okay and so like we kind of like there was like a Venn diagram of like yeah our friendship and so <clears throat> I'm like trying not to use names I was like I'm not going to remember fake names, but now this is getting even more confusing. <laughs> so my best friend at the time, he was very good friends with this girl. Okay. And so it literally started because we went to... Do you like go to a party together? We went to a back to school dance. Okay. That was like... This is so funny because it's like in middle school and like I don't think... Nothing that I did in middle school was ever serious. Like I wouldn't even... Th consider any of it to be like yeah we went to a dance and we kind of talked to boys like none of it ever ended up in like sex you know so like to me it's just so crazy yeah yeah it it is pretty insane like I when I was 24 I went back to teach uh, photography at this after school program at mm -hmm. a middle school and I was like you're all like babies, babies. Like, they're, you're little babies. they're tiny little babies yeah it's insane um yeah so you met this girl so I met this girl but the thing is like we barely talked like we kind of talked and apparently she was trying to get my attention but I'm a 12 year old kid who doesn't know how you're to a child I'm a child yeah <laughs> uh, so I don't know when people are flirting with me um so she's trying to like get my attention and it was like one of those things where she would like bring up music or bring up this band or whatever and then, and then I would just be like oh yeah I really like this and I would just go off on like this like tangent of yeah. like whatever we're talking because yeah I was like subhumans are a good punk band and I like them and do you like this band and this and that and I would just talk about like punk history and stuff like that um so yeah we barely spoke and then when the dance was over there was like school buses that were gonna like a late bus that was gonna that could take students home and um so the, literally this was on a Friday and the way that it happened was I was sitting with uh, one of my friends and we were waiting for the bus and we were kind of just not thinking about anything, just like chucking the shit around. And then her friend, so she didn't even come up to me. One of her friends comes up. Because you're in middle school. Because we're in middle yeah, school. Yeah, this and is she pretty was standard like, middle school. Yeah, and she was like, she likes you. Do you want to be her boyfriend? And I was like, yeah. Sure, we'll talk about punk bands and hold hands. It'll yeah. be great. So then... Literally, right after she asked me, um, the school bus came, and then I got on the bus, and then and you left, <laughs> and I left, um, and had the whole weekend to myself because I didn't have this person's phone number. Yeah. Um, and then when I got back to school on Monday, 
it was like the talk of the town. Like everybody was like, oh, did you guys get together? Like I heard you guys got together, this and that, what happened? Blah, blah. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Somebody asked me and I said, yeah. <laughs> And I was like afraid to go up to her. And then so like she came up to me and like held my like grabbed my hand and like kind of confirmed it for everybody. Like, yeah, we're together we're now. Toge it's exactly. so weird. Oh, middle school so weird. Like, I think I had a boyfriend for like a day once. And then I was like, yeah. this is dumb. Why are we doing this? What's happening? Like, I don't like this. It's weird. Yeah, it is. It's all very weird. Um, but I don't know. It, it would just like seem normal to me. Like. A lot of, like, my friends had, like, girlfriends and would, like, kiss girls when I was that age. Really? Yeah. I had one friend in particular um, that, yeah, he had, like, he was, like, that was his thing. Like, he wasn't, like, a player or, like, a ladies man or anything, but, like, he always had a girlfriend yeah. since, like, fifth grade. Um and so, like, I don't know, I just, I guess I was like, okay, well, this is, like, my time now, I guess. Like, my yeah. turn, like, this is normal, this is how things are done. So, how long into that relationship did it start to become a physical relationship? Um, I don't know. I mean, it started with, like, obviously holding hands, and then, well, I will say that we didn't have sex until, like, a year until like the summer in between. Okay. So I guess whatever the pacing is between nine months. Yeah. Uh, That's still not a lot though. You're still what? You're, are you 13 yet? I was 13. Yeah. My birthday is in January. So I became 13 uh, during this relationship. So in the meantime, did you guys like... Were you being physically explorative with each other or like, did you know, what did you know about sex or relationships before that? Like, did you understand what sex was? Had you seen porn before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I knew what sex was. I knew, I knew like the basics, I guess. I did. The thing is that you like at that age, you know, especially growing up at this time where like porn is much more accessible mm -hmm. um, and like having cable and just watching TV and stuff and you kind of learn what sex is. But the biggest thing for me that I like now think about is like what I didn't really understand was like all the repercussions um, like, did you understand that sex could make a baby? No, no, definitely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I knew that part, I but I mean, like, like, well, I mean, like what I didn't know, cause, okay. So there's a part to this story that I'm going to tell in a little bit, but, um, yeah, I didn't understand like how, how, I guess I should just jump into it. Okay. So after a year we had sex and then like we had sex like a handful of times before school started and then she got pregnant <gasps> yeah. what yes she got pregnant and i i can't remember how obviously she didn't keep it um, was that a choice that you guys made together kind of Kind of. Um, and you're 13? 13. Yeah. And yeah, this was like a thing. Uh, I don't even know how to talk about it because um, it feels really weird to talk about. Because it's not fully your story? Well, that's part of it. That was a big thing. I was trying to get in touch with her and just give her a heads up of what was going down, but I couldn't. So we'll see how this goes. But um yeah, so it it was a decision that we ended up on, but for a long time she had wanted to keep it. And she was 14. And she was 14, yeah. Can I mean like when you were when was that a decision like did you guys ever tell your parents that this was something that happened? <laughs> Or was this something that just happened between the two of you? 
this was this was a thing that happened and like almost okay so as far as our parents were concerned like her biggest thing was that she was like I get I don't know I can't say I don't know if her sisters or her siblings had like a similar history where they had parents at a young age but I remember okay. her telling me that like that her one of her parents was like if you ever get pregnant um then you have to wait until after like 4 or 5 months to tell me um because then I will make you uh, abort the baby or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she hit it from, and she, and the thing was too, was that I don't know if you would call it luck, but she was very thin. And so, uh, she could hide it very well. Like literally all she, like she never really started to show, but if she did, like all she would have to do is like throw on a sweater. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Um, and I mean, how did how, how, you guys made this choice together? And then did you keep dating after? Yeah, we stayed together for about a year and a half after. Were after you still that sexually happened. active or did you guys stop having sex? Um, no, we were still active. Uh, we were very much active, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, yeah, it's like I probably had more sex at this time than until I was like 24. Okay. Like, yeah, it was like the whole thing was like you, you, that's you're just basing everything off of your hormones. Yeah. So we would like any opportunity we could, like that's what we were doing. And honestly, that's probably one of the only reasons like we were together for so long. Uh, it's because you were having sex all the time. Yeah. And constantly. that was was that like the biggest part of your relationship? Did you feel emotionally connected to this person? I mean, I think we thought we did. I did. I thought we were. It was it was kind of like this thing where yeah, you I I thought that we were extremely emotionally connected like um but I also didn't know what like I didn't understand what relationships were. I didn't know what love was. Like everything that was happening to me like this was the first time I've ever experienced it. So it was like we're together, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, so I love this person. And I'm going to throw all of my understanding of what love is or what love should be into this person. <clears throat> and so I I think we both, like, had that love for each other. Yeah. Um, But it was also, a very, like, a very physical relationship. Like, like... Did she, did you, do you know if she had had sex before or were you guys each other's first person? Um, I think, she, I think she had had experiences before, mm, before me, excuse me. I think she had had experiences before me, but, um, we were essentially each other's like first, as far as I can recall, like okay. she had like fooling around whatever, anything short of sex. Actual sex is. Yeah. It's, so I kind of did some research when when you pitched this to me and because I was like, when do people lose their virginity? I don't know. Like, how old is everyone? Because I was like, by the time I lost my virginity, the way that Americans, the way that we describe it, which is just like sex between a man and a woman with the penis and the vagina. That's yeah. how like, that's how we usually describe the penetration. Penetrate. Yeah. That's how we usually describe losing virginity. By the time that happened, I was 19. Um, it says that the average age in America that men lose their virginity is 16.9 years old for women. It's 17.2 years. So about 17 for everyone. Yeah. Like junior year. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty generally pretty normal. Um, but it also said that like this definition of virginity and sex there's all these other things that sit outside of that that we just like don't really address or count. Um, only it says that only seventy one percent of people consider or consider oral sex to be sex, and only eighty one percent of people consider anal sex to be sex. But which to me is insane because that's anal sex should be called super sex. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's like a step above. It's I a like, step above. It's extra intrusive. I couldn't imagine that being somebody's first. Like I'm still a virgin. Yeah, but I've had anal. Like oh, that's that's you're, that's, you're going right to expert level. Why would you do that? Just take all the steps. Um, 
But by that definition, people who if if 71 percent of people can don't do consider oral sex sex, that means that there's. 29% of people that don't think that lesbians have ever had sex. <laughs> yeah, so they're it's still like, virgins. Yeah, they're all still virgins, which is like such this weird, they call it phallocentric, but it's this weird idea that like penis has to be involved and it has to go in the thing. So, but it's weird because all these people don't consider this stuff to be sex. They don't consider that to be losing your virginity. But if you were in a relationship with someone and they did any of those things with someone else, you would consider that cheating. So it's kind of like a weird yeah. thing of like, there's all these things we don't consider sex that are totally sex or sex adjacent. I think that's like a, um, that's like a repression thing. Like people, I feel like that's like, like it's, this is an extreme, but it's like people they are like, well, this isn't rape because. Right. Exactly. No. It's like, well, it's still not good. It's still, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not not rape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a there's certain things that's like, well, okay, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I don't it's know. It's one of those gray area things that's not really. I feel like the whole, like, oral sex or anal sex thing, like, to keep your virginity is a very, like, thing about, like, preserving, like, purity yeah. kind of a thing. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I feel like those things are lies. <laughs> like, all, all the people that say that, like, I don't think anyone genuinely believes that. That's, like, that's like all the people in America that, like, say they're Christians but don't go to church. Like, Yeah. They're yeah. just like, oh, this is what people do, so this is what I'm going to do, and I don't want to have to put a lot of thought into it, but I don't – it's – I don't act actively live that lifestyle or participate in that. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a thing. Like I knew that was a thing in high school um, where there was like a person, there was a, a, a girl that like, you know, everybody was like, oh, well, she, she only does this stuff. Like she's saving her virginity, but she'll do it everything else yeah that's so I, i've i known people like that too and i'm like that's just a lot i don't like it it's but those people yeah and it's like those people are more sexual than as every i guess they thought they have the excuse or something i don't know that's a really weird thing it, it seems yeah there is a lot of repression involved and there is a lot of repression in sex too of like well i don't like i'm a bad person if i have sex or i'm a, you know whatever and it's kind of like no just care about people and have sex with people you care about maybe I don't yeah. know it makes it better but so okay so I want to kind of come back to you and I just was like I just wanted to throw some of these statistics out there because I was like that's interesting um, but so you're with this girl she has an abortion mm -hmm. and then you keep dating did you ever think like when you guys were still dating like did you have since then have you like looked back and been like what if I had a kid like oh I I, well, less and less the older I get. Yeah. But I think about that stuff a lot. Like, because it would, it changes your life so hard. Yeah. It's not a fucking joke. Like, you can't just like play video games and go to, you know, like you can't do, yeah. you can't you be a take kid. Care of someone, like a life. Like, yeah. Like, I have such a hard time taking care of my dog right now. I know. Me too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Your dog is the best dog. Yeah. Such and it's a good still dog. so hard to take care of. Him. It is. <laughs> I could hang out with your dog all day. All no, right. I mean, we'll you're cool, but you also can. your dog. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, I, I, I think about that all the time. Like, especially like the age that I had or that I would have had a kid. Like I could, I wasn't even old enough to work. Right. Like, Legally, you couldn't work I, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. Like I think about that. Like, what? What did? What did I think was gonna happen? Like, what yeah. did, You know. Did you? Did you want to keep the baby a little bit? Was I there mean, a part of you that wanted to? Yeah. In that moment. Well, I think it was like emotionally and mentally. I thought I was like prepared for it. Like. I got, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I remember at the time, like, we talked about it a lot and we, like, made plans and, like, we're, like, thinking about our future as, like, a family or as, like, a married couple or whatever. Um, at Yeah, so I think I did want it, but then there was also, like, this um, part of like 
So the reason we ended up, she ended up getting the abortion was because of like me and my family and like my, so the way that it went down was like somebody, a, an adult found out and was like going to like tell our parents. Oh, okay. Which is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, so then because of that, like that's kind of what ended up happening was that she was like, okay, well, I can't, it's too soon for them to find out. So, uh, I'm going to have this abortion. Okay. Kind of a thing. Were Um, you upset at the time about that? It was like a combination of things. I I mean, yeah, you have a lot of feelings. Like what? I think the thinking back on it too, is like, it was also like, I got the easiest like part of this whole thing. Like I, it, it was hard on me, like meant like emotionally, but like for her, it must've been a nightmare. For her, it must've been a nightmare. And oh, that's something sure. that I didn't even like, I haven't even like really thought about like until like the last few years of yeah. like, I didn't, I wasn't even there. Like I didn't have to go to the clinic. I didn't have to pay any money for it. I didn't have to do anything. Like she told me about it afterward. So it was like, yeah, she went and she lived all that. That must have been so scary for her. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And uh, and like, I would say um, rightfully so, like she resented me for it for the rest of the time we've known each other. It's it's not a fucking joke, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah, but it, it's also something that's like, in that time, that was probably the best choice. Yeah. For, I mean, looking back on it now, obviously, that was the best choice for everybody. So how did, is that part of how you guys eventually broke up? Is that resentment, do you think? Or what What it, eventually did actually allow you guys to break up? Because you, you broke up when you were like freshman in high school then? Yeah, I was a freshman and it was like halfway into the year. And, uh, well, the thing was, was that like my parents ended up like finding out about the relationship or they knew about the relationship, but like the pregnancy and that stuff, like they found out about it after the fact. So then like her parents and my parents did not want us together. Yeah. Cause they were like, you guys are having sex. You're going to make a baby. We can't just be doing this. Yeah, exactly. So after that, like we just, but it was like one of those things where it's like, oh, we're not allowed to be together. We're going to be together. Super be together. We're going to be super. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like we like kept going and then we like try it. it. It was also like, okay, so during this whole thing, um, During this whole thing, so that, this whole, like, the pregnancy thing, that all happened when I was in eighth grade and she was a freshman. So we were not even in the same school. So we weren't really seeing each other, like... That much. That much. Like, we would make time to see each other, um, but we weren't seeing each other that much. So, like, on top of that, I don't know how it happened, but her friends found out and because her friends found out my friends found out so it was like this whole big old thing where like all of these people knew about what was going on and so there was a lot of drama involved because we were not together like we were not next hanging to out each other. actually and you you guys didn't even have time to like talk about it and process it but everyone had their opinion and was exactly. kind of like throwing their two cents out into your life and your fucking a child still honestly yeah Yeah, like those problems that you're describing are things that like with my first boyfriend when i was 18 even i gave him a blowjob and thought like oh my god i might get pregnant like i just like i knew in my head like i understand science i understand that that's not how that works but it was such a fear for me and i knew at 18 like i'm not equipped to deal with any of this and this is happening to you when you're 14 years old yeah you're you know, like you can't even drive yet. What? The, yeah. What? I can't drive. Can't work. Can't vote. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything. All yeah. I could do was go to school. You're seriously a child, and it's like you're you have this huge thing that's happening that is like s- someone saying like 
well, are you going to grow up? And you're like, I don't think I can do this any faster. I, time only goes so fast and I still can't yeah. drive. So like, what, <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It was, it was one of those things. I don't know. It's, but the thing is like when you're that age also at the same time, like, I think I just thought like, I'll just figure it out. Like, well, because you don't know anything else. You don't really understand how serious it is. Exactly. I mean, you do, but you don't because you're still a kid. Yeah, we knew it's a big deal, obviously, but we didn't know. Like, when you're that age, you think, like, you're older than you are. Totally. Like, totally. I even see, like, even I see, like, I go back to, like, high schools sometimes. And I'm like, you guys are baby. Like, I have that. No offense with people even your age, because you're 25 now? 26. You're 26. Even yeah. when I look at who I was when I was 26 compared to who I am today, I'm like, oh, I'm a whole other person. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I can't imagine from 14 to 26. That's how it feels now, where I'm just like, that's why it's such a weird thing to even think about that that happened to me. And sometimes I forget, like... That it happened. There was this whole other life that I lived where I could have possibly been a father at 14. And yeah. like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, and then now, like, when I date, now it's like a thing. Before, I like would have to think about, like, okay, when is a good time to bring up this information? Yeah. Now it's kind of like I have to remember to consider that because yeah it's just like it's it, so far in the past it's like this isn't something i think about every day but it's like oh yeah that did happen and kind of like changed me a little bit so how did after you guys broke up you broke up when you're 14 mm -hmm. was it kind of part of because all this drama happening or oh yeah so the reason we broke up well towards the end of it so after the abortion like things were just in a steady decline like, yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's, catastrophic event for a relationship. Yeah. And um yeah, we were just fighting more and more and more, just constantly fighting, but also You're like, also it, still children. So the things yeah. you're fighting about seem monumental, but in a lot of ways maybe they're not, or maybe they're proxies for feelings that you have about this other thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, hard to, like, recollect everything because we would fight just about anything. Like, we would fight just to fight, you know? Like, yeah, because like, you're just literally. feeling upset and you don't have a place to put it because also yeah. you're still kids and you are you have all these hormones and things are developing and, like, yeah, yeah and also, it's just part of being like a kid. I said, yeah, like I said, a very big thing that I didn't fully understand or realized was that she like had a huge resentment for me. For sure. Like, and she like held on to that. And she's so young too. She probably doesn't have the language to really understand or talk about that. It's just something she feels, but she doesn't have the language to express yeah, that to you. Exactly. And to unpack it. Exactly. You know, it's probably something that she's still unpacking as a person. Yeah. No, I definitely think so. Um, yeah. She, yeah, well, I mean, both, like, just the area we grew up in and the families that we each had and, like, having to, like, her family would, like, they're one of, they're, they're like a family where they're, like, there for each other no matter mm -hmm. what, but also it's not a healthy setting. It's, like, it's you support. It's controlling in it's many controlling. ways. It's yeah. controlling. It's, like, it's, like, you support your family. Are they family. heavily religious? No, but they're like a traditional Mexican family, you know, Latino family. So like they are, you, they're like families like that are like there for each other when they need help, like with moving or with taking care of someone else's kid or with this or, you know, very tangible things. And But not necessarily emotionally. But not emotionally, like they don't believe in like um mental health or emotional health like that's not that's not a thing in 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 a, a a large portion of latino culture or latino families was your family like that too well my mom is a little she was a later generation okay um and i stayed with her for the most part um because my parents separated uh when we were young and uh is it just the three of you is it there's four brothers. There's four brothers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have three brothers. There's four of us. Okay. Um, 
And so she essentially, you know, raised us on her own. You know, there was family there and we did get to see her dad periodically. Um, but, you know, along with that, like she, she was, she tried to be there emotionally because she didn't have, uh, she had a strange, well, she, yeah, she had like a strange relationship with her family. Okay. Um, then things that they got better over time. But um, the flip side was that she was always very busy. Right. She had, she's trying to support you and take yeah. care of you and also maybe spend time with you kind of, but not. Yeah. Her biggest thing for us was that she tried to spend time with us, but her thing was always like everything at the time, like everything was always a lesson. Like Anything, every, every time we would hang out, it would always like turn into either something that had to do with our career or something that had to do with not having sex <laughs> because she had kids so young and she was like, don't ruin your life. Yeah. Um, and I didn't listen. Because <laughs> you're a kid. Yeah, because I was a kid. And, and you have this hot girl and you're like, sex sounds pretty great though. Yeah. And yeah. And it was. <laughs> And it is, but it is, it's super fun. Yeah. But you have to be safe about it. And my mom was always just like, wear a condom. She'd be like, are you having sex yet? I'm like, I don't want to talk. Mom, I'm not having sex. Yeah. She's like, well, you need to wear a condom. Don't get pregnant. Like my mom from a young age kind of like taught me about safe sex. I think that's super important. Like, I think that is probably the best thing. But I was also, I've, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, I think that's even better because my, the whole abstinence thing, like, my mom wasn't, like, abstinence and would, like, take us into these things, but she was very much, like, you have to wait, do not have sex right now. Like, don't even think about it. Yeah. Think about your career, getting but into But then if college. someone tells you that, then you're like, it must be pretty great if it could ruin my life, right? <laughs> 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 I have a, it's got to be pretty cool. It sounds pretty good like I have some bits about it because like casual sex is not like a thing yeah. that I'm super into but part of it was literally when I was younger I didn't think women could like sex I thought sex was literally just something that dudes liked <laughs> and I was like wait it can ruin my life and it's not even for me like why would I do that this is stupid so I just like I didn't see the logic of having sex. I didn't see, the, I didn't feel like there was anything in it for me, which is literally the only reason I didn't have sex when I was younger probably is because I was like, this sounds kind of dumb. And then when I figured out how great sex was, I was like, do I have to go to school though? Like, do I, <laughs> like, do I have to I keep just be having sex? This is pretty great. Will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it, you do get such like an endorphin rush, especially when you're young. So like, like now that I'm older, it's like sex, I, you know, sex is obviously great, yeah. but it doesn't have that pull that it did with my first relationship. Like it isn't. No, and that was, because. yeah, that was a big thing for us was that it was like, you feel this passion, like, especially being that young you and like, so many hormones. <laughs> yeah. All the hormones are starting to come out and like everything feels that much better. Like, and like, it was just it, it, yeah, I, I feel like, I, I don't know, it was, it was too much, in every aspect, like, that whole relationship was too much, like, yeah. everything was too much. It was way too much. You're, you went to, like, you went straight into advanced player mode, like, you didn't even, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, just maybe try the easy stuff, buddy, like, we just holding hands or whatever, just chill yeah, we out didn't, a little like, bit. Yeah, we did but that's the thing, too, is that. One of the crazy things that I think about, too, is, like, we waited a whole year. And it sounds like, oh, you waited a long time to start having sex. Yeah, but you're still a child. Yeah, but the thing was, was that, like, I remember when I was in middle school and, um, like, other people, there were other couples. We were not the only one. And, like, a lot of the older kids that were in, like, eighth grade would ask me, like, oh, have you guys had sex yet? And I was like, no, not yet. Um, and that was after like two or three months. Oh, weird. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, well, what are you doing with her? Like, what are you, why are you with this person? Because I like her. And, and I was like, yeah, because I like her. <laughs> I like, don't know. <laughs> She's nice. Yeah. How, how do you think having sex at such a young age and kind of having this experience of like maybe being a father changed how you have relationships now have you had longer relationships since no then? that's literally been like the longest relationship 
I've ever had. At, what's the what's point. your close second? I don't know, maybe maybe six months. Okay. And are you dating someone seriously now? Um, or are you dating? I'm currently someone? dating somebody. Okay. And do you feel like? Because I feel like when you have something that lasts that long, it leaves an imprint in your brain, and you kind of have to like heal and recover and assess over time. Yeah. yeah. Um. How do you think that that relationship has impacted how you date now and the way that you approach relationships? Um, well, for a long time, I was just like, oh, this is how relationships work. Because right. literally. This is your first experience. Yeah. Literally, somebody was like, do you like this person? Because they like you. You're in a relationship now. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> and so I just thought like, oh, this is how people get together. Like you just like each other. And then you go to the movies a couple times and then now you're a couple. Right. Um, Whereas as an adult, there are so many more things to consider. Yeah. Um, and so for a while, like that's what would happen to me. Like it, I would say after that, so from like 14 to maybe 22, I would have like, it's so stupid to say now, but it's like I had somebody that I considered a girlfriend for like a few months. Um, but it was just like, because that's how I thought like dating was. I, I didn't even know what dating was. I, Were you I, just like hanging out? Kind yeah. Of? You know, yeah, we would hang out. We would go on dates and, and you know, they would be the only person that I would do that with for a few months and then I what I found was that over time like it with each person it was like I became too much oh interesting like because I was were... like I'm ready for it I'm here this is what we're doing you know and they're like I don't even know you like that yet you know or yeah it wasn't it wasn't until I was about 24 I want to say maybe 22 20 or um where i was dating this person and we hit it off like immediately or so i thought <laughs> we hit, she's just really charismatic um but we hit like we hit it off and we had sex like the first night and that was the first time that that has ever happened to me yeah um so that I took it as like, oh, we really like each other because we're having sex the first time like we meet. Yeah. Um, and then so we I we started seeing each other. I started going over a lot. And then um, after about two months, I was like, oh, things are going really well for us. And then all of a sudden she started like pulling away. And then she was like, this is too much. I can't handle this. Yeah. And, but the thing was, was that we got along really well. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, that's fair. But like, I would still like to be friends with you genuinely. And that, you know, that happened. She's a very good friend um, now, but it was like over, it was like getting to know her after we, dating was off the table. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, oh, like that's when I learned like, yeah, you can't just jump into somebody because you don't <laughs> know who they are yet. Yeah, you, you can't just jump into like a relationship because you don't know this person. For real. Um, you know, it you takes time. It yeah, things take time and you have to get to know somebody and you like shouldn't try to get like super serious right away and right and stuff like that. And so like over like that. It's like taking me this long to learn that. That happened when I was maybe 24 and 26 now. And like um, the thing that affected me between then, I think with the biggest part was like, and this is stuff that I didn't talk about earlier, but like I'll just touch on this real quick. So being in this relationship at such a young age, I didn't learn how to socialize because I was only spending my time with, with one person. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I didn't know how to make friends. Like I had friends, but I didn't know how to make friends. Or to maintain or friendships. Or to maintain friendships. Yeah, the things that you do, like just call your buddy up. Just see what's yeah. up. Yeah. So even throughout high school, like it was super hard for me. If I didn't already know a person, like I 
we didn't have friends, like yeah, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there was like a part. There was a, I had summer school one year, like my junior year. I had to go to summer school, and I had a friend that was he used to be on the football team, and so we we used to hang out at lunch every day, and I remember he was sick for two days, um, and I would like for the first day I stood next to the, these football players, and I was like I we have nothing in common. We have no reason to be here except yeah. for, except for this guy yeah. who's not here. So then the next day I kind of just like walked, like I walked around for lunch. Like, then that's kind of like the thing was like, I didn't know how to meet people, how to talk to people, how to maintain relationships. That's something um, that I'm working on as an adult too, because I think I, when I got into college, I kind of was in a series of serious relationships with people. And I always just had that person. And then now that I'm an adult, like since living in Los Angeles, I've been working really hard on like not just being friendly with people and liking them and caring about them, but like reaching out to them and being like, let's hang out and like get a drink or like chill or whatever. And like especially with female friendships and also just like with dudes that like I love and they're my friend and I care about them. But maybe necessarily we're not trying to date each other, yeah, yeah. you know, and like that is something that's like, oh, this is nice to just have friends and just like call your buddy and be like, dude, did you see this thing? This is little, And you get to talk with them and you like, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like that is such a good thing to have in your life before you enter into a relationship. So you have like a support system and a network Definitely. that isn't just one other person. Yeah. A lot of the people that I've I've met. A few people, a handful of people that, like, I find, like, people that lose their virginity, like, between, like, or that start dating, at least, between, like, 17 and 22, like, the later you can get, like, closer to 22, like, they're very charismatic, they're very friendly, like, they're very, like, these, the people that I've met, the handful of people, like, they're, like, an example of, like, they're very good at friendships, and they're very good at, like, they have a healthier relationship with their friends and with whoever their partner is. That's really smart. Yeah. We got to learn from them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <We> gotta... <laughs> That's why it's like now it's like, oh, man, if I ever have a kid, I'm like, you, like I, I, I'm like, I have to break it to them in a way that's like not don't don't have sex. Don't ruin your life. But at the same time, I'm like, don't have sex. Don't ruin your life. Like, it'll get better later. Like, just it. Yeah. So it's like I wish that I had. It sounds so stupid. It was like, I wish I lost my virginity later. I wish that, like, I didn't start dating and having sex. Because especially, like, when you think about how, you, like, again, I was a child. I was a baby. And, like, you meet kids that are this age and it's like, why would you be doing anything except going to school and, like, having fun with your friends? For real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would you try to do anything else? I mean, unless you're, like, a genius and, like, you're changing the world, like, keep doing that. Like, do like but, like get hobbies. Be, become a talented person. Like, don't fuck around with relationships. Like, that all that stuff comes later. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what really fucked me up for a while, too. Because the thing, too, is that because of this, I had a codependency issue, like a really bad one. So I have um, one of my best friends and uh, her, she's a musician. Um, I'll shout her out at the end. But <laughs> uh, one of my best friends uh, named Jean, like we had a really strong friendship and I was going through depression and she was going through depression. But she was one of these people, like I said, that they entered relationships and dating like much later in their youth. Mm-hmm. Um, so she had like this support system of friends to like help her out. But for me, she was the only one. So yeah. I was dumping like all, all of my All of your feelings and all of your negativity, sadness and negativity. All my sad- yeah. yeah. That's really hard to have one other person. Yeah. And I've I've been working really hard to not do that as an adult because I've I've been I realized I've been that way when I wasn't in a relationship with someone I always had like one best friend exactly and it's like okay wait we have to have other friendships we have to do other things so that you get and it also gives you a better perspective for who you are because if you're only relying on one other person to tell you that you're valuable and that they see good in you then you think that still no one else does yeah and that was a dangerous yeah (laughs) That was a big thing for me was because I wasn't hanging out with anyone else. I was just like hanging out with this person with with John and 
you know, she was very supportive and very encouraging me, but I was like, you don't get it. Like, you don't know what I'm going through. Like, uh, nobody likes me, like this kind of thing. And also a very big part of that, um, it wasn't the reason I started doing comedy, but it was what I, it, like, I realized that after I started doing comedy was I wasn't doing anything. Like, For I you. Yeah, I didn't have, I wasn't working on anything. Like, she couldn't spend time with me because she was, like, practicing or playing shows or she was in a she had a bunch of projects going on yeah and all I had was work and that was it and like maybe going to shows but that's not like that's it's not a full life yeah I I have a really difficult time I'm on, I'm on some dating apps right now and I'll be like so what else do you do and they're like no I pretty much just do real estate and I'm like okay well I got stuff to do, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to engage with you. Like, what, what do you mean? You don't do a thing. You don't make anything. You just consume the world. Like, what are you talking about? Like, make a thing. Do a thing. Yeah, like, it just something. drives me. Go I get, fishing. Yeah, like, go. <laughs> have but a I mean, hobby. just like go be in the world and enjoy all of the beauty that it has to offer, but also like give something back, process it, understand it, you know, be with it. And I, I think that is something like I have a difficult time with people that I have a difficult time spending long periods of time with people that don't have a creative outlet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where they don't have a passion. Like I just love to cook or I just love to do this thing. And I get it really excited. Like if you don't have like a passionate thing, it's just hard for me to hang out with you because I, I don't know who you are. It's just, I can't figure you out. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like one of the most, like the saddest things, was I used to work in this portrait studio that was like photography? Yeah. Oh, is that how you have that sweet photo of you and your dog? No, no. That is a <sighs> shout out to Patrick Riley. He's a really great photographer. He's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's <laughs> such a cute picture. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, he's great. Those, those photos. I have like a whole bunch of stuff that it, from that shit that I haven't used. Um, but no, I worked for this portrait, but it was a children's portrait studio. So it was very basic and it was like, they rented out space in Walmart. Like, so they have like this deal, this like multi-store deal with Walmart. So there, you know, like you go into Walmart and there's like a Wetzel's pretzels or a subway yeah, or something. Yeah. It For was sure. that, but a portrait studio. Um, and one of the things was the way that mine was set up was that my register was right across from like the checkout stands. Mm -hmm. So I would work there all the time and on the weekend I would see every weekend I would see the same people buying the same things and there was like this one guy in particular that he could tell he had like some sort of construction job or like a plumber job like he was like a blue collar yeah, yeah. Um, you know works for his money kind of guy and uh, he every Friday he would come in at the same time and buy two cases of beer and he like I was like that's his weekend like that's what Jesus. he was doing Jesus yeah those are his plans. That's his plans. Oh, He's God. buying two pieces I don't want to ever <laughs> be that person. Yeah, and that was one of the saddest things for me. Um, so, yeah, and then ever there, I had taken a break from, like, creative stuff and from, like, trying to have a passion because I used to want to do film, and then I wanted to do photography. And before anything, I wanted to be a writer. And, like, I just never took to those kinds of things. And then so what I had started doing was because I loved all of these things, was I started curating events like I would put together I was like a booker or promoter like yeah, I would okay I would put on shows for musicians and for other artists and and that's how you have you, the show that you run now oh kind of yeah okay, yeah sorry, well that's I well I have the experience with it and that, that's actually how I found the venue okay um through meeting all these people like most before I started doing comedy like most of the people I knew were musicians um, cause that's kind of what I dabbled in. But at the same time, it was like, yeah, all these people, like I would consider them friends, but it was also like, we don't see each other if we're not at shows. Yeah. Like we don't see each other if we're not doing anything. So it was like, yeah, they're not really, uh, we didn't have a reason to like hang out outside of this space kind of a thing. And, um, bringing it back to what we were talking about. So I had taken a break and I became really depressed because I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Um, and then I was like unsuccessful with friendships. I was unsuccessful with dating and stuff like that. So then one day I realized like, oh, I have to do, or no, it wasn't, it was like once I started doing comedy and I had something to focus on and like be passionate about, 
then it was and that I could stick to um it was like oh this is why I was having all these feelings because I'm had something now I have something to do before it was just like all I had was like time to sit with time and sadness yeah exactly (laughs) no yeah it was also like you feel like you're not good enough or you're not this or that and it's like oh if you just do something if you just try something you'll find something that you're good at or you'll find something that you want to pursue um and that you can feel good about and like that'll help you get your own happiness like I didn't really like I had made this Instagram post. I really hate doing like these sappy social media posts. There was one a couple of weeks ago where I was like, I had like this weird thought. It's not that weird, but it feels weird to say aloud where it's like, my life is pretty good. Like, isn't that nice? Yeah. It's, it's like so one of those nice. things. And then like all of those, uh, like all those phrases that you hear, like all of a sudden start to make sense. Like when people are like, oh, you got to love yourself before you love anyone else or like. Stuff cheesy, like that. cheesy <laughs> bullshit that we embroider on pillows, but we'll kind of believe a little bit. Yeah. And then it was like one of those moments where like all of those things started making sense. Like, oh, like you can't like just be confident. Just be confident. Like just do these things. Just do it. Just do it, Nike. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I get it, Nike. I get it now. I'm going to buy some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, so we like to end this podcast by someone telling us maybe some kind of like fears that you might have in when you start to feel yourself falling in love or getting into a relationship and the things that you're trying to do to correct those fears. Um, so a fear that I have had for a while was that I would become too much for some, there was two things. The biggest thing was like, I would become too much for somebody. Like I would jump into things too quickly Um, or the other thing was that like, if I started to get close to somebody, it was like, is this the person that I'm supposed to be with? Mm, That weird trap. Yeah. Like, or is this something that I kind of just became accustomed to? Mm -hmm. Cause that's what happened to me the first time. Right. Right. Um, that was a really big thing for me, but I think what I, so I'm dating somebody now and I told them that I wouldn't divulge too much information. That's totally fine. Yeah. But one of the, the good things that that's happening is that we have like these check-in conversations. We are like, but we don't like, I don't know. We, we, our communication is where it needs to be. I think like, we sh- we were very clear with our intent with each other and with our emotions with each other. And like, we're both like, Hey, I like where this is going, but you know, let's keep it at this pace Yeah, kind of a thing. Let's get to know each other. That's really nice. And yeah. And at the same time, it's not, um, a huge focus. Like it's, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I should, if this is going to sound wrong, but I don't think either of us are putting too much pressure on the relationship. That sounds healthy and good. Yeah. So I don't know. I think right now where I'm at and just in my own personal life, I think things are going well. So like these fears that I have, like I feel like I'm a lot more prepared to handle them and to like have that communication that I think is necessary and like, I'm able to just deal with things in a more mature, pragmatic way, I guess. That's awesome. Um, Yeah. I think that's really good. Thank you so much for coming. Do you want to tell people uh, where they can find you and maybe the dates of the shows that you run so that they can look you up or come to your shows? Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram at Domsey the Bomsey. It is uh, D-O-M-S-I-E, the B-O-M-S-I-E. Um, and I run a show called Friends with Benefits. That's the third weekend. It's a flexible date. We're trying to get third Saturdays, but for now, it's the third weekend every month um, in La Puente at a space called Bridgetown DIY that is amazing, and they do a lot of community stuff and host a bunch of great events, so check them out. Um 
I don't know when this one's going to come out, but so the way the show, so I'm like all over it's the place. Okay. The way the show works is it's a benefit show. So we have a variety of comedians, dancers, musicians, and we've supported things like homeless youth. We have a trans benefit coming up. We have um, domestic violence benefit coming up. This can be great. Um, yeah, you can reach me at all those things. Friends with benefits, Domsy the Bombsy. Um, also, I said that I would shout out Smiling Beth. Um, very good musician. You should check her out on all of the Spotify's and band camps and stuff. Um, and you should also just go to Angel's Instagram and look pictures of his cute dog Hermes because he's the best oh, yeah. fucking dog. Don't tell my dog I said that, but Hermes <laughs> is the best. I might start an Instagram for him. I would follow that Instagram so hard. He's so fun to play with. He's so good. <laughs> come meet my dog. Yeah, come hang out with Angel and, and his dog, you know. Hermes. Cool. Hermes, <laughs> the best. Um, guys, uh, if you like this podcast and you want to follow us on Instagram at Andrea Loves Everybody, follow us on Twitter at Andrea Loves Pod or Email us at Andrea Loves Everybody at gmail.com if you have a pitch for a show or, you know, some other idea you want to just let me know how cool this is. Um, also, if you could please rate and subscribe on iTunes.